As we've already established in my Dragon Age Origins review, Razor Fist loves Bioware. He wants to drape Bioware in velvet, take her out to a moonlit beachside dinner, and speak to her awkwardly in the third person, and maybe catch a movie. Nothing pretentious, though, and certainly not fucking Avatar. I'd rather staple my nuts to my forehead than subject myself to that two-hour environmentalist wankathon, which is why you can logically conclude that I have nothing but positive things to say when it comes to Bioware's most recent release, Mass Effect 2. Don't break out the champagne just yet, though, as I've found this game to be something of a mixed bag. The first question I found myself asking as I navigated the stunningly beautiful lens flare seared environments in Mass Effect 2 is, where are you hiding the RPG in my RPG? I've been critical of the Final Fantasy series in the past for its lack of actual role playing, and it would be hypocritical of me to laud Mass Effect 2 for being a riveting RPG experience when in truth Bioware is dispensed with much of the stat building and customization intrinsic to the genre, which is why this review is going to sound somewhat negative. I do, however, want to preface my comments by saying that in all, I find Mass Effect 2 to be one of the best games I've played all year, and generally speaking, a superior effort to the first game in the series. The problem it runs into is really a general issue affecting the industry as a whole. It's been casualized. Now, please don't mistake me for some basement-dwelling WoW subscriber calling himself a... Ugh, hardcore gamer. Personally, I view gaming as a hideous, life-stealing addiction, so in my eyes, calling yourself a hardcore gamer is like calling yourself a hardcore meth addict. Yeah, I'm sure it makes you look like a bona fide badass at the crack house, but to normal people, you just look like if Kate Moss had capped off a six-week meth bender by completing the Iditarod. Look, guys, I understand the fiscal appeal of widening your game's audience, but by turning Mass Effect 2 into Gears of War 3, the sort of wide audience you're ultimately snagging is the sort that breaks chairs by sitting down too fast. Also, sales numbers were higher in 2007, before every franchise under the sun dumbed itself down to placate the unwashed masses, than they are currently. Even the biggest franchises are having a hard time turning a profit in this economy, so one really has to wonder if casualization is accomplishing anything aside from the complete alienation of any and all gamers with taste. Perfect example, shops. Now, I recently finished reviewing Final Fantasy XIII, so encountering Mass Effect 2's preposterous shop system has really left me wondering what the traditional RPG shop mechanic ever did to piss off the game designers. Did it point and laugh at how poorly the last remnant sold? Was it caught fucking Yuna in the champagne room? What the shit? It's not like it was broken. We all know how it works. Wanna upgrade your equipment? Go to shop. Sell your shit for money. Spend money on new equipment. Return to narrative. But in Mass Effect 2, you can no longer buy new armor, you can only download it for money, or by redeeming your download token via the Cerberus network. And really, since every suit of armor has an attached helmet in a game where you need to see your player's face, why would you ever want to? Basically, you end up making slight changes to your standard set of N7 armor. It's neat that you can change the color, make the arm guards pointy, and turn your character into a Power Ranger, but really, aside from some mild stat changes, it's all more hollow and shiny than the new Star Trek film. So, so wait, if I can't buy things at shops, why are there even shops in the game? Well, let's give you a hypothetical scenario. You want a new gun, so you walk into the gun shop. Naturally, makes sense so far, right? At this point, you ask the man at the counter for a gun. He explains not only that he's not a cashier, but that they don't really sell guns in the gun store. Oh, really, you ask? Well, what do you sell? Why, we sell blueprints for guns, the smug little retail monkey explains. So you can buy our blueprints and then assemble the weapon yourself back on your ship. All right, stop the presses, fuckface. According to Bioware, I should be perfectly fine if the next time I have a hankering for some donuts, I head into the local purveyor, and instead of being handed a bear claw, they hand me a fucking recipe. I can't get over how imbecilic and unintuitive this shop system is. It's like they program this shit with their elbows, and while we're on the subject of guns, most fans of the original Mass Effect were more than slightly perturbed when they discovered that they now have to reload what until now had been an energy weapon. And of course, they give a half-assed explanation. Well, you see, it's not actually ammo. They're heat sink clips that you have to eject or else your weapon overheats. Right, and rape is just surprise sex. Nazi death squads were just urban planners, and a pentagram's just a star doing a handstand. Listen, asshole, if you can no longer fire your gun when you run out of this mystical ammunition-like substance, if you have a counter on your gun that tells you when your gun runs out, if your gun makes a fucking clicking noise when it's out of said substance, it's goddamn ammo. Not only did they not upgrade the shooting in Mass Effect 2, they actually somehow managed to downgrade it. 
Why? To make it more like traditional third-person shooters. That's why. Because Lance and Cody were trepidatious about hosting their frat house kegger while playing Mass Effect 1. Oops, this RPG plays a bit too much like an RPG. Time to take a sledgehammer to the cranium of both plot and game design, ensuring that every gamer, regardless of attention span and personal preference, rides along with a Gears of War crowd on the intellectual short bus. Let them all eat Ritalin, declared Bioware Antoinette. And eat Ritalin they did. And the games they did suck and the shareholders did rejoice. Huzzah, they chortled, holding hands and skipping around the fulminating corpse that once was original game design. And Razor Fist did lift the finger at their shameful display as he mused, Yea, verily, yon video game industry art fucking clueless. But Bioware just couldn't leave well enough alone. They capped off the deductive triumvirate of horse shit by removing the entire vehicle exploration component from the game, a feature that was somewhat prominent in the design of the original. Basically, instead of actually landing on each planet you want to explore, Explore, mining various elements, uncovering the remains of alien civilizations, and encountering various side quests, you get to hang out in your ship and painstakingly survey every inch of each planet by hand. I'm not sure I fully grasp the technological curve in Mass Effect 2, so, so we've developed AI advanced enough to discover its own consciousness and revolt, but we can't program a simple bit of software to survey a planet and launch probes as needed? Am I seriously sitting here surveying a planet manually? This is fucking retarded! And do you know what the worst bit is? This gameplay edition was praised upon release by virtually every game reviewer under the sun. Did the entire world develop a masochistic streak while I was busy fuming about the bullshit shop system? I mean, sure, the Mako segments in Mass Effect 1 could get marginally tedious, but at least you were in an actual vehicle on an actual planet doing actual things. You want tedious, motherfucker? Surveying planets in Mass Effect 2 makes Final Fantasy VIII's draw system look like fucking Tetris. Another area where the game caters to the same asshole who attended the Modern Warfare 2 Midnight release is the area of sex appeal. To be sure, Mass Effect 1 slathered a generous helping of TNA whenever the hell it felt like it, but more than once during the sequel I found myself choking back laughter at some of the more blatant fan service. For the better part of the game, Subject Zero is wearing what amounts to a leather belt and a scowl, while Miranda looks like she keistered a pair of volleyballs on the way out of Cerberus HQ. And damn, Subject Zero, pull your fucking pants up. Those things sag any lower will be peering down this loopy skank's birth canal, which after a brief conversation with this skinhead slut doesn't exactly sound like an exclusive club. This broad has screwed more aliens than Ellis Island. This all would have gone unnoticed, of course, had Bioware's virtual cameraman not trained at Playboy magazine. I'd hate to see this mouth-breathing perv in the flesh. Every time a female's in a five-block radius, he's got a zoom lens and a two-inch erection with their name on it. I mean, how far are we gonna take this exactly, Bioware? It's not like I'm anti-cheesecake or anything, but the next time I get into a debate over the artistic merits of the video game industry, it would be helpful if the inevitable double penetration scene from Mass Effect 3 weren't playing in the background. Alright, alright, time to reel in the rage. As I said at the outset, even though this game pisses me off plenty, it's better than any other game I've played in 2010, and at this point, I've played pretty much all of them. And for what it's worth, Bioware, I still want to fuck you. But now that you've been palling around with electronic arts, I'm afraid you'll need to be tested. I don't know where the fuck they've been. I'm Razor Fist. God. Fucking speed. have been seen in Al Jalani, Western Lanus. I've had enough of your disingenuous assertions. 